gentlemen, good day and welcome to Mahanagar Gas Limited Q1 FY24 earnings call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Probal Sen from ICHA Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Yusuf. Uh, thank you, everyone, for making the time to attend this post Q1 FI24 results call of Mahanagar Gas Limited. With us from the management, we have the senior leadership team represented by Mr. Rashu Singhal, the managing director of NGO, Mr. Rajesh Patel, the chief financial officer as well as Mr. Rajesh Vagli, the Senior Vice President of Marketing. Uh, we, I will first hand over to the ENY IR team of MGM to make uh, their disclaimer remarks, and then we can go to the management for their briefing on the remarks. Uh, Runjun, over to you. Thank you, Prubhan. Welcome to the participants on this call. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and we believe that the expectations contained in the statements are reasonable. However, these statements involve a number of risks and uncertainties, and may lead to different results. The risks and the uncertainties related to these statements are included, but not limited to fluctuations of sales volume, foreign exchange, uh, or the cost or ability to manage growth. I urge you to consider the quarterly numbers are not a reflection of long-term trends or indication of full year results. They should not be attempted to be extrapolated or interpolated into a full year number. With that said, I would now hand over the call to the management. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of Mahanagar Gas, I am Ashu Singhal, Managing Director. So, once again, welcome and very good afternoon to all who have joined this earnings call of MGL for the first quarter of the financial year 2324. I would like to thank you all for attending our call today and I will give you the brief of the results. Before that, as you are already aware, APM gas prices and market determined gas prices, be it the term contract or the spot gas prices have softened during the quarter, and this has given very good respite to most of the CGD companies. With APM gas prices now capped at $6.5 per MMBTU for two years, we see it is, a good, it is providing a very good stability in our gas cost. Further, MGL has also participated in e-tendering process of HPHT gas, which has come through initially IGX and later on through direct e-bidding. And we have secured long-term gas supply, which has resulted in optimizing gas sourcing portfolio and significantly reducing our reliability on high-priced imported RLNG. Earlier, we used to take a lot of spot RLNG. Now it has come down substantially. During the quarter, MGL has signed two memorandum of understandings, one for the compressed biogas with BMC, and the other is with, for the setting up of LNG dispensing stations across various places. For CBG plant, MGL has entered in MOU with uh, BMC, that is Brahman, Brahman Mumbai Municipal Corporation, for setting up a, around 1,000 tons per day of uh, CBG plant in Mumbai. This initiative will have several like, benefits. Some of them are like reducing the emissions of methane from landfills, develop alternate sources for natural gas, making <coughs> Mumbai a greener city and healthier place, and helping in uh, generation of local employment, development of circular economy, and towards achieving our sustainable development goals. One more MOU has been signed for setting up LNG stations with Dadzina LNG who were the first company to set up LNG stations in India. And this will be in Maharashtra and outside Maharashtra also. This will help in developing the supply side uh, LNG corridor ecosystem. On 18th May, MGL also launched a app, mobile application, MGL Tej, in partnership with the BEST, the transport company in Mumbai, to facilitate convenient refueling for CNG commercial vehicle owners, that is bus, truck, tempo, and cabs, mostly targeting the commercial segments. <coughs> MGL continues to create CVGD infrastructure 
its business segment in the license areas. During this quarter, 41,580 domestic households were connected, and we have established connectivity for nearly 2.2 million households. We have also laid 77 kilometers of steel and PE pipelines, thereby making the aggregate length of 6,612 kilometers. We have 312 stations operating uh, as on 30th of June. We also added 76 industrial and commercial customers during this quarter. And as on 30th June, we have 4,589 industrial and co commercial customers. As far as our Raigarh GA is concerned, we have connected 69,106 domestic households and 29 CNG stations are currently operating there. During this quarter, we laid 6.5 kilometer pipeline in Raigarh and taking the total length to 389 kilometer. This expansion of our pipeline has created a very good ecosystem for CNG and PNG in Raigarh area. Our Sabroli station, which is having LNG dispensing facility also, was recently commissioned and we have started filling LNG into the vehicles from the Sabroli station. Coming to MGL's operations during this quarter, we have achieved overall average sale targets of sale volume of 3.41 to MMSCMD as again 3.372 MMSCMD in the previous quarter, which is an increase of 2.3%. Current quarter volume consists of CNG volumes of 2.481 MMSCMD and domestic PNG volume of 0.496 MMSCMD. And uh, industry and commercial segments volume is 0.435 MMSCMD. Compared to previous quarter sales volume in the case of CNG has increased from, from 2.41 to 2.481 MMSCMD, which is an increase of 3%. However, in case of industrial and commercial, sales volume has decreased from 0.452 to 0.435. That is a decrease of 3.7%. And sales volume for domestic PNG has increased uh, from 0.51 to 0.496 MMSCMD, which is a decrease of, sorry, decrease, which is a decrease of 2.9%. The financial numbers, current quarter EBITDA, EBITDA is rupees 521 crores compared to previous quarter EBITDA of rupees 390 crores. EBITDA margin is at 33.9% for current quarter as compared to previous quarter EBITDA margin of 24.2%. Net profit after tax is rupees 368 crore for this quarter as compared to 269 crore in the previous quarter. Therefore, there is an increase of 36.8%. We are continuing with our initiative in area of environment, safety, and CSR. I am very happy to announce that MGL was awarded the best CGD company of the year by NAV Bharat uh, Environmental Conclave Awards in 2023. The award was conferred by Honorable Union Minister Sri Nathin Gadkari Saab. MGL conferred with Green Tech Award also at the hands of Honorable Former Chief Justice of India and Additional Commissioner of Delhi traffic police under the category construction safety from Green Tech Foundation. With this, I conclude my remarks, opening remarks, and will be happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Amit Rustaji from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thanks for taking my question. Uh, first is on the volume. Uh, so, what could be the reason for a YOY drop the volumes in bo in CNG uh, this uh, year? YOY? Year on year on year. You no. refer to Q1 last year compared to this year Q1, right, Amit? Yes, yes sir. Sir, on a YOY basis, yeah. Year on year. Well, uh, last year Q1, one reason is uh, the prices, if you notice, they were around 60 rupees at that time. 
This time Q1 we started off with 79. Now again, we may not have very, very scientific accurate answers for this, but what we are trying to give you is what we perceive to be, could be the reasons. Yeah. Second could be the, probably later part of this year we have been getting slightly, relatively richer gas. So when you convert it in SCM terms, the volume shows a smaller number. The KG drop may not be that much. In fact, uh, just to add to what Rajesh is saying, the KG number has slightly improved over the last uh, Q, Q versus Q comparison, whereas in SCMD there is a shortfall of around 3%, 2.3%. So as there are few reasons, one that although their numbers have been added by the vehicles, but the volume has not grown because of the prices were higher in the last quarter, this quarter Q1 versus Q1 comparison. The other part is that uh, maybe the price differential with the adjoining state. And, and uh, the other additional observation we had was uh, the sales volumes of BST mm -hmm. in Q1 last year were higher. So the number of CNG buses has dropped marginally. That has... Uh, you know, contributed to a small decrease. Lastly, what we have observed is uh, the number of uh, medium and heavy commercial vehicles converting onto CNG. You know, when the price started increasing dramatically, we used to get a few, I mean, uh, three, four hundred of these uh, about a year back. That number dropped. So their contribution also would have decreased. And these are the three, four things which, you know, come to mind. Okay, sir, got it. And, uh, sir, with respect to uh, the developments with the MSRTC, uh, I think uh, you have been highlighting that uh, you are, have the successful agreement with them on getting some buses. So could you give some progress on that and what could be the target for this year and next year on that front? Yes, so MSRTC as currently they are running about 120 plus buses from what used to be double digit numbers till about one or two months back and we are expecting five uh, 450 more buses to be inducted in uh, eight msrtc depots in our geographical areas by november or december of this year so about uh, 50, 60 or so will add on every month. We have uh, recently commissioned uh, online CNG filling facility for them in their Vithalwadi depot. And uh, we are in the process of setting up uh, CNG infrastructure in uh, six more of their depots, which are at uh, you know, Panvel, Karjat, Pain, Roha, Alibag, Puran. So those uh, 450-500 buses will definitely contribute to, you know, volume addition over the next two quarters. So just to add on this, uh, when our uh, commissioning will be over in the in the bus depots? And second is, uh, what is the average consumption of uh, one bus? Because it could be significantly higher than the average of uh, other buses maybe. So these buses will take about 80 kgs per day. Okay, and when you will complete the stations at uh, these depots? The stations will all get completed by, say, November, December. And if there is any small mismatch between, you know, the buses come before, let's say, a few weeks or a month before our station is ready, we have offered MSRTC uh, private retail outlets where they can, you know, fill their bus, which are very close to their uh, existing depots or which are on their routes in which they run. Okay, I got it. So thanks a lot for taking my questions and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kunal Tanvi from Banyan Tree Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. So my question was largely on our pricing strategy, especially on the CNG side. Uh, so, as you you know alluded to the fact that our uh, sourcing cost has come down significantly. 
and we have got benefited out of it in terms of our profitability and but when i look at the pricing differential between say diesel and uh, cng it continues to be much uh, you know lower than our historical averages so what is you know our strategy in terms of pricing uh, are we looking like in in order to improve volumes does it make sense to you know take a price cut uh, or the how do how do management look at it from a longer term perspective the current discount is i think uh, good enough for petrol uh, compared to petrol and as far as diesel is concerned also a very uh, good uh, uh, discount is there in the range of around 16% right so currently you know uh, we have seen the numbers also increasing compared to last quarter where around 13500 odd vehicles came on cng this quarter uh, around 14750 vehicles have come on board okay and this trend is increasing so you know april may june june we have seen the uh, more conversions so you know having uh, reduced price uh, in april i think it may take some time however we are open as you are saying that you know on gas cost front there is very good improvement uh, since now very good stability and visibility is there with respect to apm prices at 6 and a half dollar it is capped okay also hpst is available uh, plus currently spot is also uh, at a very good level so we can consider uh, you know some price reduction as well however our strategy to enhance volume will be uh, you know uh, in dual manner we may target by you know increasing our marketing effort and sales promotion effort to these segments and the customer or vehicle type where we see uh, you know uh, currently uh, small penetration and penetration can be increased with specific uh, targeting the specific type of vehicles so we will be doing a two prong strategy of targeting specific segment and also considering price uh, revision as and when required okay sure so just to follow up on that so basically what you are alluding to the fact is at this price also uh, it is attractive from the customer perspective that's what yes. you're saying good traction and the numbers are increasing so current quarter we have added around 14750 uh, vehicles and the sure. monthly trend was increasing but, uh, another observation there what we have analyzed is uh, you know the adoption of cng in the commercial goods vehicles has dropped compared to what two three quarters back and you know they are the ones who have a relatively high per capita consumption and the contribution is accordingly higher in volumes so we are looking to target you know these segments by some uh, you know direct marketing uh, initiatives trying to catch hold of you know aggregators fleet owners etc and incentivize them to use cng or we may try you know uh, one fill larger volume uh, some discount kind of a thing so that the specific segment can be targeted for capturing the volume and conversion more incentivize sure yes because this segment which you are saying is dropping down is more price sensitive because they are fleet owners and they would you know want to have a better pricing proposition sure makes sense add to mr wagley's this do commercial vehicles are slightly you know numbers are less we are seeing very good number of private cars getting converted maybe because of the uh, oe vehicles uh, models are available so there we don't need to push much it appears but yes if is you know target specific uh, vehicle type mainly commercial through uh, uh, specifically devised schemes it will help us better in future and in the long term we are also trying to increase the infrastructure reach out and making trying to bring digital initiatives and more cng stations in the areas wherever we can put so that the queue is reduced that will make uh, also we are looking at the turnaround time and other initiatives to address some of the issues related to the queuing in the cng stations so it all these things put together we expect that uh, the volume should improve from here on sure and uh, second if i can excuse is on our profitability if i look at this quarter numbers right on a uh, 
like if I look at uh, like unit economics are a bit is like 16 rupees per SEM. Uh, how, what do you, any thoughts on the sustainability of the same uh, and you know what should one look at from a medium to long term perspective what is the profitability that we are kind of you know working with so you know uh, this quarter in terms of you know managing the gas cost was very good so probably we could time it very well in terms of you know buying spot when it was cheaper than hpht and then later on tying up a little more quantity of hpht as well uh, so uh maybe this quarter the uh, ebitda margin is very good or uh, uh, gross margin in case of cng is very good and uh, this quarter has been very good with respect to even industrial commercial realization and the gas cost in uh, for industrial commercial because most of the uh, uh, term contracts majority of our term contract uh, for industrial commercial is linked to henry hub and the index work was quite low that has given us a very good benefit okay uh so you know uh, maybe uh, this is probably one of the best uh, margin gross margin as well as ebitda margin kind of a quarter you may see little uh, you know reduction going forward depending on how the indexes move uh, how spot market moves and how we are able to you know uh, optimize our gas cost okay sure and uh, from a longer term perspective we continue to hold on that 5 6% volume growth and uh, uh, and what level would be our ebitda per scm like from a longer term perspective i think longer term perspective uh, 10 rupees 10 rupees average you should consider as a ebitda margin okay so in case you know uh, we have to do little more and aggressive marketing we will not you know shy away from doing that okay but we will try and secure you know new more vehicles and future volumes so that should be our strategy that is what our current uh, uh, plan is sure and 5 6% volume growth is what we are targeting right yes so that is that is uh, uh, we are targeting, targeting. targeting higher numbers uh, but then in uh, business as usual scenario case or whatever if you look at past trends 5 to 6% uh, we are confident of getting but will be attempting more Sure, makes sense. Thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Yogesh Patel from Dalat Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question, sir. Congratulations on the good set of numbers, sir. Can you please share uh, APM cash share in the priority segment for the quarter one? And if possible, can you please uh, provide a detailed breakup uh, of your gas or lng contract uh my uh, priority segment you are saying apm availability yes sir uh, we have got apm to the tune of uh, for the q1 it is around 89% there was a shortfall of around 11% okay some some part of it was met through hpht and some part of it was met through spot gas Okay. So slightly Thank reduction you. compared to Q4. Q4 was having APM allocation of around 91%. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Second, uh, and if possible, can you please provide us a detailed breakup of your gas or LNG contract, mostly non-APM? Non-APM, uh, we have one, uh, you know, uh, RIL contract, which is old HPST. uh oil link brent link and uh, around uh, 0.5 henry hub linked two contracts 0.4 we signed earlier and 0.1 we signed later on so these are the three contracts primarily suffice our requirement for imc and they have a good you know threshold for, for ramp up and ramp down with uh, take or pay almost 0.2 from hpht uh, rl gas also Okay, this newer 0.2 mm SCMD recently you bag in the recent auction. Am I? Yeah, in two two stages we took I think initially 0.1 and then uh, later part of the June we have signed one more 0.1 mm HPHT gas. So in total we have close to 0.8 mm SCMD kind of a non EPM gas contract. That's right. Yeah. Wrong. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So sir, second so, question. No, no, uh, Yogesh, the last. Point one and point one HPHT is specifically for priority. You cannot use that for I and C. Yeah, sir. Thanks. Thanks for that. 
And second question uh, is regarding uh, uh, vehicle addition. As you mentioned, 14,750 vehicle addition during the Q1. Can you please uh, uh, give us an idea how much improvement you have seen on month-on-month -month basis? Because the April, May, and June. So the May and June, you might have seen a uh, jump into the volumes. So can you share some thoughts on that side? And secondly, you also mentioned that the commercial vehicle addition has a little bit slowed down. Can you share us a number, uh, how much was during the quarter? Uh, yeah. So, just to give you commercial vehicle number was around 1200, whereas uh, Q4 it was around 1300 crore. Whereas during this quarter, uh, private car is around 9750. Okay. Out of 14,770. Whereas private car last quarter was around 8,800. So there is an increase of, you know, 1,000 numbers in case of car and some marginal reduction in case of uh, commercial vehicles. Okay, sir. And monthly jump, any any idea on that? So uh, if you look at, you know, June, uh, highest number of uh, small vehicles are there, more than around 450, whereas in the earlier month it was around 350. Okay. Yeah. And as far as cars are concerned, cars almost 3,700 was in June, whereas in the earlier month in the range of 3,000. So maybe, you know, once post, you know, price reduction, you know, it will take some time to people to realize and then maybe booking and then actually vehicle coming on the road uh, may take time. Because there's a Vahan uh, portal uh, vehicle registered on CNG data is there. Yeah, and the last one from my side, sir. Uh, can you provide us the capital expenditure details during the quarter? How much we have spent? We have spent, spent roughly 150 crore uh, capital expenditure during this quarter. And what is our target for for 24? 24, we are targeting more, but minimum, I think, 600 crore we can spend, and maybe it can go up to 800 crore, depending on availability of you know sites for construction of the CNG stations. Uh, permissions for laying pipeline, etc. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thanks for that. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your question to two per participant. Next question is from the line of Niharika from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. So my question is based on the biogas plant. So what kind of uh, investment are we looking for this and what kind of revenue do we feel will be getting generated? See, the, uh, 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 biogas, we have signed an MOU. The process is on for finding a partner to come up with technology and setting up the plant. It is expected that another one and a half to two years will be uh, required to complete that plant and start commissioning it because First, the land has to come in place, then uh, grading of the land, and then setting up the plant, and then commissioning it. So the top line from it depends. It will not be a very big number, but maybe in the range of um, 50 to 60 CR will be there once the, pipeline is, uh, once the plant is commissioned. And similarly, the profitability will be in the range of 20, 20 to 25%. Okay. And uh, in our annual report, we are written that uh, we are working with MSRTC to in uh, ensure the conversion of 1,000 buses to CNG in next few years. So how are we on that front? And uh, answered that some time back. I mean, uh, there are 120 plus buses right now out of uh, that lot which are already running. And out of these 1,000, we are expecting five to 600 of the buses to be operating within our geographical areas. And those five, 600 buses will all come on the road by November or December of this year, by which time we will have set up infrastructure and eight more of MSRTC bus depots to cater to filling these buses. Okay. And my last question would be, are we looking for any more reduction in prices from your own, passing any more uh, prices? This question also we answered, I think, in the beginning itself. Uh, so, we may consider some price reduction depending on how the volumes journey takes from here. But our target will be, you know, to give uh, impetus to vehicle segment where current uh, penetration is low and which is a uh, high potential segment. 
So we will do a two-prong strategy of promoting those vehicles or giving them more discount and uh, if required, consider a price reduction depending on how gas cost uh, moves uh, here onward. Of course, Q1 was very good with respect to gas cost and that is reflected in our profitability as well. Just to clarify on your last question that uh, the CBG plant is expected to make 50-60 CR top line in the 500 tons plant and if we go to 1000 tons plant in a phased manner it will go to 100 CR per annum and 20% around the beta margins are expected. Okay. And how much of cash are we carrying in our books as of now? So roughly carrying the 1800 to 2000 crore of uh, cash. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bank Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening and thank you very much. Uh, so if you look at the numbers you're talking about for vehicle additions and the addition of the buses, is it fair to assume that uh, once they are all uh, in operation on an annual basis in full potential, should be able to increase your CNG volume by about uh, one to one and a half million cubic meters a day? And that means you will possibly clock about five million cubic meters a day um, in the next one or two years. Is that a fair assessment? Because buses itself will possibly add about nine to ten lakh kgs. So is that a fair calculation? Good evening, Mr. Ramesh. I think your question is not clear. Can you repeat it again? Yeah, so based on the numbers you have shared in terms of the addition of MSRTC buses and the monthly run rate of uh, CNG vehicle additions, uh, so this CNG vehicle addition will go up to the extent of the buses being added and your weighted average consumption of CNG will increase. So if, you, if, you, if I do a back to the envelope calculation, I, I, um, I get a number of you know around uh, one to one and a half million cubic meters uh, per day of additional CNG consumption. Uh, so that should take your volume so close to 5 million cubic meters a day, maybe in the next one, two years. Is that a fair assessment? No, no, no. These 500 additional MSRTC buses, if you take an average of 80 kgs per day still, that is 40,000 uh, kgs per day. Okay. Which is roughly 0.6 mm SCMD or maybe 0.55 mm SCMD. Kgs, huh? Kgs per, not mm SCMD. 0.055. 55,000 cubic meter, roughly? 56,000. 50, ah, 55, no, yeah. Upon 05. Ah. But Mr. Ramesh, yeah, you're right in terms of if the existing vehicle plus this buses are added, uh, roughly 55,000 cubic meters gets added on a daily basis. So, so on a cumulative basis, you are saying it'll add about 55 to 60,000 cubic meters. Okay. Only from MSRTC buses if they are on target and they convert the number yeah. of buses we talked about. But our strategy is, you know, we may push more of commercial vehicle and we, we, we will try and put more of commercial vehicles and that will give us the uh, going for good volumes. And on the uh, LNG uh, auto fuel plan, uh, once you start uh, the operation of the LNG station, so what is the number of stations you are planning and what is the kind of volume you are targeting in the next one or two years? And what is the kind of pricing and margin profile you are looking at there? You can help us understand the broad, you know, um, economics of that business. To start with, we may target around, you know, five to six stations in next 10, 12 months. Okay. And pricing will be obviously uh, whatever, uh, you know, uh, customers we are targeting is mainly uh, heavy vehicles and buses. Okay, and uh, one is the you know ESG agenda of most of these truck operators or whoever is using the trucks, and uh, it will be uh, price linked to uh, diesel. So we will uh, give a discount over diesel, so that you know their uh, uh, additional costs of switching from a diesel vehicle to LNG vehicle gets covered in a reasonable period of time. So we may price it around maybe around 15 to 20 percent discount in that range. Is this the new SPV? LNG, yes. Ah. There is a lot of potential in our view that uh, LNG in long haul on LNG in highways will be a very suitable solution for transport because electric vehicles are still to come and electric vehicles, the battery weight is very heavy to make it a good choice for long haul. The other option is hydrogen, which again is a sometime maybe 
many years down the line the infrastructure is required to be created so the only real, realistic options left are one is diesel which is already there but considering the environmental problems associated with diesel we see more traction will come either on cng or lng cng again is some having some issues related to the range and uh, the number of cylinders which are required for heavy transport vehicles so lng is one solution which is workable so we are very optimistic about that and therefore we have started this joint venture company to roll out on a fast manner first we want to commission five to six station in one one and a half years time and subsequently based on the our ability to get more contracts from downstream contract downstream customers or the aggregators we will roll out more stations on fast basis because one station can cater only to 40 to 50 trucks and each truck carries around 450 kg of lng so which is a good uh, substantial amount of filling in one go therefore uh, if we put out more stations the volumes can pick up very quickly so uh, what is the investment required for this jv uh, and uh, uh, what is the kind of uh, lng price which would make it attractive for you to develop that business so uh, roughly you know per lng station excluding land it should be in the range of around 5 to 6 crores that's our estimate and you know uh, we may try and capture two segments one is you know b2b there you may have a contract and a close contract so you may offer more discount and there could be b2c where you may have a slightly lesser discount if one of if, if a large fleet of vehicle is coming under one contract then uh, linked to diesel we may offer a better uh, around 10% discount to diesel is what we think is workable and which is a win win situation to both, both the uh, parties okay thank you very much i'll join the thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of sabri asarika from mk global please go ahead yes sir uh, firstly uh, so how much is the volume in kg terms then uh, cng 118 you are saying about q1 it is 1.80 mm kg d million kgs 18 lakhs kg per day 18.4 lakhs kg per day yeah. 1.8 okay 18 1.8 million kg okay sorry, sorry 1.84 1.84 1.84 And sir, uh, uh, this uh, this MOU, uh, this uh, LNG station, it is a final agreement signed with with Petronet, right? For the JVC com for the joint venture company. Not Petronet. It yeah. It is a company called Vedanath LNG. Okay, right, sir. What LNG, sir? Vedanath. B B for Vedanath LNG. Okay, okay, right, sir. This is the first company to set up the LNG stations in India. One is in Nagpur, and other is place called Vani near Nagpur. So they were the first company to set up the LNG stations dispensing in India. So we have set up a uh, SPV with them, and uh, the term sheet has been signed. It will be a 51% uh, stake for MGL and 49 with the Badenas, uh, and it will be a joint venture company with two companies joining hands. Okay, and LNG sourcing will be done by whom? It will be like taken from the bulk marketers. or you will be involved in that also it is a strategy call by the company and the spv will take a call on it but uh, we will optimize on the sourcing from mgl side also and try to get the best deal for the company so that the last point is to get the volumes from the diesel side to come on to the lng side so we will try to optimize both on the procurement of lng and bringing mgl expertise in getting the best cost in it the other part is to bring the infrastructure at optimum cost and third is to uh, promote the esg agenda so that the benefits which are available to the customers on esg side and commitment especially if you talk about cement and steel they have a minimum if any company is exporting they have to cut down their carbon and therein comes a very good potential of lng to support that objective right sir And the second, uh, just one small follow-up. Uh, what's the status of Open Access now? Anything happening there, or it's like again uh, slowed down? Because there's some paper which came few months back from PNGRB side. Anything has happened since then? 
it is matter is under sub judice and the hearing was somewhere in may but it is now scheduled for somewhere in september or october because of paucity of time available in the supreme court or delhi high court delhi high court the matter could not be heard because the bench was saying that they need more time to hear this case and it was deferred for two days back to back two days back to back they have scheduled but some other priority engagements were uh, uh, suddenly came on that day so they have now given a time in either in september end or october this year okay so thank you so much and all the best thank you thank you Before we move to the next question, a reminder to the participant: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Sumaya V from Evendus Park. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sir, so, Vishnu from Park. Uh, so, just wanted to understand this LNG. Uh, uh, What will be the rough uh, costing? I mean, I understand gas is a is a, co- is a component uh, that keeps moving up and down. But let's say you get the gas, and what will be the additional cost involved uh, if we need to keep, uh, let's say, for 15-day inventory, there is a boil off, there is electricity. What will be the additional load in terms of cost that you expect uh, in, in in terms of uh, dispensing the uh, LNG apart from the gas cost? Any rough idea if you can help us? Other than gas costs, I think. Roughly around 10 to 12 rupees could be the cost, including boil off per kg. Boil off rough rate per day. What would be the number? It is 2 percent to 3 percent. But we have an advantage inherent available with Mahanagar gas that if it is located in our geographical area, we can use the boil off gas to put into the pipeline grid. So that can be pushed into CNG or PNG segment, and therefore we don't lose that. uh boil of gas what boil of gas will be lost will be to the transporter's account which will be i mean actually that will also not be there because if the truck is running then the boil of gas is used in the engine also in case the truck is not running then uh, sometimes uh, if, it, if the waiting time is more than one and a half to two days then we generate some 2 to 3% of boil of gas which needs to be I mean, the, in the engine has to be run for 10-15 minutes idle. Then the total boil off gas for next two days will be accounted for. So more things are developing to optimize on BOG. But if you have a CGD company associated with the LNG station, then most of it is taken care of. So, so this uh, boil off two to three uh, percent got it. Sir. So 10 to 12 rupees is the overall additional cost over and above the gas is what you are seeing. So that's a present rough estimate, yes. Over and above gas cost means like the OPEX and the CAPEX and the margins and overhead and BOG and things like that. So that will be in the range of 10 to 12 rupees, which uh, Rajesh has just mentioned. But through the chain, you need to keep it at 160 degrees centigrade for this to be a workable option. 160 is the temperature at which uh, it is taken in the LNG terminal. So in the operating temperature, when it comes to the tanker and when it comes to the tank and when it goes to the dispensing, it is in the range of 135 to 150 minus 135 to minus 150 degrees centigrade. Okay, so so this uh, 10 to 12 includes the power cost to maintain that 130 uh, even at 130. The power cost is negligible because it is in liquid form, so hardly any power is required, and therefore. What we are saying, not exactly 10, uh, 10 to 12. It can be 10 to 13 rupees also, 9 to 13 rupees. So it depends on several factors, but uh, it should be in this range. Yeah. But the LNG is not uh, refrigerated by any electrical power or anything. It is kept in a very thickly insulated tank so that the temperature doesn't rise. The little amount of power which is required is for the loading pump to, which is very minimal, which is very small. See, in case of gas, when you have to compress from say 19 bar to 220 bar, there is a lot of power requirement because it is a compressible fuel. Whereas in case of LNG, it is pumping from whatever little pressure it is there, and it it is kept at the almost similar pressure because the liquid is flowing from one tank to the tank in the vehicle. So the power requirement is negligible as compared to CNG. 
and the sir a rough math we know is that between 15 if, if i take $1 of mmbtu it's about 2.5 to 3 rupees in fem terms so here uh, if you are looking at a uh, 15 or a $20 gas roughly cost between uh, if i take even a 15 into 3 about 45 and i let's take it even to 50 55 plus 15 this will come down to about 70 odd rupees in terms of uh per kg competing fuel per kg so it's simple or no the point you are saying is if you have to take it in per kg terms you are right and if you take in per kg it will be around 65 rupees or so 65 to 70 rupees diesel is being sold at uh, around 95 rupees or so 90 to 95 rupees so there is this delta is available to take care of operating costs capex overhead profitability and the margins so that is the play we were talking that 10% of discount if is offered to the diesel company diesel operators they will be prompted to convert to lng and second part is the sourcing is very critical in terms of getting the right cost for lng and which can be handled in two manners one is that you can have a portfolio mix of mdf gas or the brent link gas or nbp link gas or a mixed index so that the parity is maintained with respect to diesel and more stability is there in the procurement cost so just to ask sir what will be the cost of a diesel truck and an lng truck just to close the conversation currently the gap is around uh, 25 to 30 lakhs per truck or 40 ton 40 toner truck or 50 toner truck but that is expected to come down if more oems from india like tata and uh, aishur ashoka they are also trying to build in right now what we are saying this differential is primarily because the lng kit is being imported from china and other places so currently blue energy is roll, have rolled out these trucks which is around 25 to 30 lakhs costlier than the corresponding diesel trucks and there will no there will not be any pulling issues which normally people are saying traction which is available in lng is as good as diesel or even better because lng is having the highest dense energy which is available for burning the issue when it comes to cng is because if you have a low hp engine and then a, or a retrofit cng vehicle is there then the issue comes but a, if a engine is ab initio designed with for a lng running engine it will give you as good a traction as a diesel truck can get and this is thank you thank you next question is from the line of himang khanna from namura please go ahead hi sir hope i'm audible yeah you are audible uh so i just wanted to check with you if uh, can you please uh, help with what are the realizations for the inc consumers in this quarter and uh, post the quarter have you uh, has there been any downward revision for realizations for the segment and uh, secondly on the sourcing could you please just repeat how much was the total gas from rri to phd for the inc sector Firstly, uh, realization net of tax for INC as a whole average is around fifty three rupees for SCM. Okay, Q one this year. And you were saying RIL was how much was RIL uh, gas used for INC segment? Yes, sir. For yeah, one mm SCM D. Point one mm SCM D. Answer is the realization for INC was sixty six rupees in the previous quarter, right? No, uh, previous quarter was roughly fifty four and a half. Fifty four point five. There is a difference. I am talking about average. In case of commercial, which is a small restaurant category, we price linked to commercial LPG. The realization is higher. In case of industrial commercial, it is lower. So what number I am giving you is an average of industrial and commercial put together. Okay, the difference would be more than ten, twelve rupees when it comes to commercial LPG and industrial category. Definitely, sir. So fifty-four point five in the previous quarter is fifty-three in this quarter, and after this quarter, have you taken any further cuts on this? So we are, you know, uh, pricing linked to alternate fuels. So automatically, if uh, alternate fuel prices move upward or downward, the pricing gets adjusted. whatever benefit or good margin you see in the current quarter in industrial commercial segment is not on account of price realization but it is mainly on account of uh, gas cost going down in this quarter substantially almost 8 to 10 rupees we have been able to save in 
gas cost during uh, this because of the index linked Henry Hub and Brent both were down. So gas cost was very good uh, during this quarter. Definitely, sir. Just want to confirm on that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nitin Sharma from MC Pro Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, two small questions. First of all, can you please provide a breakup uh, between a volume in uh, commercial and industrial? And then I'll follow up. Breakup of commercial volume. and volume? Yeah, commercial uh, and industrial. Yeah. Uh, CNG was 2.48 MMS CMD. Domestic was around 0.49. And rest is industrial and commercial. No, a breakup between industry and commercial. Uh, industry was around 0.32 and commercial 0 0.12, 0 0.13 roughly. Understood. And, and uh, is there anything, bookkeeping question, is there anything with the employee cost that there is a decline of 11 or 12 percent? Employee cost? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, last year we had, uh, you know, pay revision. So actual cost was uh, higher, which was booked. It's a non-cash flow item, but actual liability was booked in Q4. So marginally Q4 was higher. Otherwise, actual payments and all that is uh, maybe a little higher because of increments in current year or new people added in the company. Okay, the high number seen last quarter is mainly because of a provision on account of actual valuation. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vikash from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, this is uh, regarding volumes. If you could tell me, uh, firstly, you said that uh, on a KG basis, uh, this particular quarter was 1.84 million kgs of CNG, and last year, 1Q was what number? Is same number, is it? No, no, it was 1.81, and this this quarter it is 1.84 million kgs per day. Okay. okay. Now, uh, what I wanted to check was, uh, uh, is the current, uh, you know, are the current volumes that you people are doing, current daily volumes, and uh, uh, there are you seeing a reasonable pickup versus the 1Q average since you said that the cut in price was in April and uh, the, uh, you know, the positive impact of that would have, uh, positive impact would only flow out in second quarter, uh, you know, later. So are you seeing daily volumes to be much better than what it was in 1Q and do you think that uh, this year you should be able to close with a or 5% kind of a volume growth, uh, which has been your guidance. See, traditionally, uh, first quarter, because of the school vacations and other things, CNG volumes, we have seen drop, okay, especially in May and part of June, okay. And now it has picked up uh, end of June as well as July, okay. So, and also the number of vehicles getting added on to CNG has also gone up, uh, in the month of June, comparatively to April and May, so that shows that there is a growth. Also, since you know prices were reduced in April, the addition of vehicles and now more clarity on stability of gas costs is reflected. So we expect that uh, there should be good amount of uh, vehicles getting converted from here on, and it should add to the volumes in the range of five to six percent by year end. Okay. No, so my question was, uh, if you look at the current volume trends and compare, do a YOY comparison so that this insanity is adjusted, does that give you a kind of confidence that, uh, you know, that 4-5% kind of a growth should, should become visible pretty soon? And you can say that this particular quarter was something which is maybe a one-off kind of a blip and uh, things should normalize to closer to the guidance of 4-5% volume growth. Is that a fair way to look at things? Look, at it, it's, uh, you know, very difficult to make predictions in a very small, uh, you know, range. This 5 to 6% guidance which we give is typically for a 5-year CAGR. 
Now there can be good years, good quarters, bad years, bad quarters. Now last quite a few quarters we have seen relatively you know flattish kind of uh, trend. But what we are basically saying is, uh, you know, the, nothing has nothing fundamental has changed in this. And we expect that yes, that five six percent CAGR we will achieve. Whether exactly at the end of this year we'll be at six percent. Or three percent, or seven percent. No, sir, I'm not even, I'm not even getting onto that. That is the matter. But broadly, in that range of four, five, six percent, you still hope to close the year at that kind of one year growth number. Because you know why I'm asking this question is uh, that uh, you know never, other than the three, four quarters impacted by COVID, have you had a volume decline on a YOY basis? So this is the first time that that has happened. Um, that's why you know actually, actually the volumes have gone up by around one percent plus. Okay, okay. but okay. the density factor, the and the report in SCM terms, it is looking lower. So look, the revenues we get in KG terms because we're selling in rupees per no, KG. No, no, I understand. I appreciate that, but that's something which we only came to know during the. But even you know, it's possibly one of the most subdued quarters, other than the COVID quarters. Is, is that's why from a volume growth perspective, and you know, it's understandable because. The cut happened only in April, and the pickup in terms of work, conversions, etc., would have would take a little bit of time. But as long as it is that, then it's fine. But you know, from a perspective of, is there any other change for us to get more concerned about changing that four five percent kind of a number? That is what the thought of the question was. Look, this, you know, five hundred MSRTC buses, they are worth about forty thousand kgs. Now, if you look at forty thousand. It is two percent of our CNG volume. Oh, so, you know, of course, all that you know, the whole volume we'll get only by end of December. But yes, by the year end, we'll expect a. Just to put one more thing in perspective, 21-22 we had 1.21 million kg per day. 22-23 whole year we have 1.35 million kg per day. This first quarter we have 1.84 million kg per day. Now the last two quarters, Q3 and Q4 of 22-23 were not good because the prices were 89 and half rupees, and therefore uh, the impact has started coming from this Q1, wherein we have seen 1.84 against 1.81, which was year on year Q1 versus Q1. Now it is slightly better Q1 versus Q1 on kg basis, but the things are going to improve from in our. View in next uh, three quarters, primarily because the rates have come down. The more conversions we are targeting to have more segmented approach for sales promotion. Also, in case required, we will go for some uh, price cut. Also, in case sourcing and the uh, other competitive fuel prices are there and our margins are maintained at a healthy level. So, seeing all these things and putting it into the right perspective, we expect that. Volume growth of five to six percent should be achievable by the year end. Sure. And sir, uh, just uh, one suggestion, firstly, sir, it will be uh, rather than this uh, confusion of kgs, etc. Since there could be at times variance on how rich the gas that you get could be, I would suggest that maybe if we could add that one extra line in terms of the release. Then we give out that volume. Surely we will do that. We will do that. In case of CNG, only we reduce the. Yeah, CNG in case of CNG, that is holding kgs. That will be something which will be useful. Because this problem comes only in case of CNG, so henceforth uh, in our declaration we will give a kg per uh, day sale also for CNG. No, let's give both kg and MMSCM. Yeah, yeah. So that's both MMSCM. That is one. The other is, sir. See, I think the biggest, uh, you know, uh, target area where. Uh, there is a lot of growth potential. Is the like you were saying the MCV segment. Now, what kind of targeted, uh, you know, discounts etc. that we could give over there to attract more conversions? You said that they started. They kind of started going down in terms of conversions. So, is there some thoughts around that? What kind of marketing effort we are kind of planning? Uh, maybe some kind of loyalty card specifically for those customers, or some some something on those. Those uh, you know, lines. Yeah. So the exact schemes. I mean, a lot of uh, thinking has already happened on this. The final touches are being given to the schemes, which we are planning to launch soon. 
and we are looking at a two pronged uh, strategy one is uh, maybe we could uh, no fund part of the retrofitment cost or fund part of the delta between the price of a new diesel vehicle and a new cng vehicle and the second bit of course is what you are suggesting uh, targeted uh, targeted discount in uh, rupees per kg through a loyalty program and card that that program is also you know we already started building it and we should be ready to launch it uh, also in a couple of months see what uh, rajesh is saying is that there is sometimes a delta between uh, petrol vehicle and a cng vehicle or a diesel vehicle and a cng vehicle now the running cost is uh, cheaper in both the cases so therefore we expect that if we discount or incentivize on the upfront purchase prices in one way or other the traction should be available for people to take on uh, cng commercial vehicles sure understood sir thank you so much all the best thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that management is able to address question from all the participant in the conference please limit your question to one per participant next question is from the line of samir deshpande from fair deal investment please go ahead hello am i audible yes yeah you are please go ahead congratulations for the excellent numbers and uh, i would like to know uh, this um, uh, the, we have uh, the margins which uh, we fix per kg uh, after our per kg cost for the gas which we are getting suppose it is 100 and we have a margin of about uh, 10 rupees after that so if the prices go down or if the prices go up we keep our uh, 10 uh, rupees uh, at same level or we keep on changing it it is depends on so many things typically if you see we have eight and half rupees ebitda per scm for 21 uh, 20 to 23 sorry 21 22 20 to 23 we have nine and half rupees the last quarter was uh, 12 and 12 and half rupees this quarter it is 16 rupees so obviously these margins have improved over this quarter primarily because of very low cost of procurement in some of the quarters and the high cost gas has off taken taken off from our kit portfolio and we got better margins now this should be in the range of same 9 to 11 rupees uh, ebitda per scm per scm however again we have to balance it out with the volume growth which we are targeting the competitive prices of the alternate fuel and thirdly the whatever margins we want to keep it at what range so i have obviously some corrections will happen either in terms of launching certain schemes to get attract more volume or to to maybe address the issue related to the pricing of cng and png in respect to get the margins in order overall for the year you say that uh, we will be uh, having our 9 to 11 that is the range is last 8 to 10 years if you see we have been operating in similar range 9 to 11 rupees but uh, we expect the similar range to continue in future also unless something drastically changes okay because in this quarter we had significantly higher uh, uh, 16 yeah, or, you should be happy you know that the margins have improved <laughs> quite a lot uh, so they so maybe going forward uh, they are uh, likely to come down No, no. I am said again. Said there are three things which are important for margin. One is the volume growth we are looking at. Second is the competitive alternate fuel prices. Third, the range of margins which we want to keep. So all these three put together, we will take a decision on what are the correct margins. But typically, we keep it in the range of nine to eleven rupees. Okay, and we so overall, we expect uh, this year to be a significantly better year compared to the last year. considering the q1 q1 on q1 we are uh, much better 16 rupees uh, versus last q1 was how much one second uh. 
लास्ट क्यू वन वॉज नाइन नाइन रुपीज क्यू फोर वॉज ट्वेल्व पॉइंट एट रुपीज एंड दिस टाइम इट इज सिक्सटीन पॉइंट एट रुपीज so uh, it is much improved than the q1 of 22 23 but again as i explained uh, we will take some correction right going forward in the next 9 months there will be some averaging going uh, going on and all this thing yeah so, yeah this seems to be good for the gas sector because last year we faced lot of issues with the war sourcing etc so now all these things are behind us and with the overall competitive intensity and all those things and we also have a low base for the last absolutely. year absolutely see the prices in last year when shooted out of the roof for uh, spot lng they were lot of uncertainty related to the war which is going on and the winters which were there in the europe so all that has contributed to lot of uncertainty and uh, volatility in the prices of lng going forward we expect this year to be much more stable and uh, hopefully uh the worst has we have seen the worst now things should improve in terms of more uh, stability in lng prices but having said that people are also the companies are also more pragmatic now in terms of having a more balanced port- portfolio in terms of having more link or term uh, contracts related to henry herb or brent or things like that so that the dependence on spot is minimized so that is one learning which we have also done and the results of which can be seen in the q1 results of this year the cost of procurement has come down and that has only resulted into a high margins habita margins for the company thank you and all the best to you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint this was the last question for the day i now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments thank you so much for all the investors and for joining on for the earnings call we expect that uh, you people will be supporting us in future as well and we expect that the confidence will be maintained in the company thank you so much for joining in and i am very pleased to share that there have been some improvements and some in improvements in the margins and we are taking actions to improve the growth numbers also for volume and other things also in terms of strategical initiatives also the company is contemplating about several initiatives which will be rolled out in near future thank you so much if anybody has been able to not ask some questions do uh, get get back to us we'll surely come back to you thank you thank you very much on behalf of icici securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line